to another episode of Guys We Hugged. It's the anti-slut shaming. I think maybe we can say slut. I'm deciding. It's the anti-slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. If you want to write us an email, it's sorry about last night's show at gmail.com. Today's subject line was appropriately assigned to me. I pretend to be asleep so I could spy on my boyfriend masturbating. <laughs> Corinne and Christina, I'm a 26-year-old female in a three-year relationship with a 31-year-old male. We moved in with each other after around a year, and it's been lovely. We have sex just about every day, and honestly, living together has been a breeze. We both are very horny, and the sex is always fun, and no, I'm not allowing this fact to overshadow a bunch of red flags or anything. Long story short, I once accidentally walked in on my boyfriend masturbating in the shower, and now I can't stop spying. I need to paint the picture because I find the details are pretty funny and, uh, and important context. My boyfriend's vision is negative seven in both eyes. That is so fucking blind. I'm a negative six and a half. And I can tell you that there could be a person in front of me when I don't have my contacts out and I, I can't tell. Um, so he gets up before me every morning to shower and get re gets ready for work. He goes into the city most days and I work remotely. And even though I don't physically get out of bed when his alarm goes off, I am awake and typically just hang out in bed until he's done showering. Until a couple weeks ago, I had to pee. So I knocked on the door to ask if I could come in, something we agreed on since both of us have accidentally walked in on each other pooping. I guess since the shower was running, he couldn't hear me. So I fully opened the door and took a full step into the bathroom to ask again when I saw him full on watching porn and masturbating in the shower. How do you watch porn in the shower? Oh, you the, can do it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I have full phone, co phone conversations in the shower. Wow, really? Yeah. Wow. I just shower. Uh, the best part about this <laughs> is that his eyesight and I guess his hearing is so bad that he never saw me come in. I slowly shut the door to a crack that I could peek in and watch him through the mirror typing out this. I feel like I sound incredibly creepy, but I am getting horny thinking about it now. Since then, a couple of times a week when his alarm goes off, I pretend to still be asleep wait to hear the shower running and then peek in to see if he's doing it, which he is 50% of the time. After he leaves for work, I masturbate thinking about it, him getting off and thinking he's sneaking it from me for some reason makes me very horny. I totally get that. When I started writing this, I didn't really have a question for you, but now I'm wondering if you think I should stop because it's a violation of his privacy. I don't think he would be mad or anything, but maybe a little embarrassed since it's such an intimate thing with himself. Although I thoroughly enjoy watching him do this, I will actually take your advice as I have enough material in the spank bank. I got to say, if, if my if I found out my boyfriend was like spying on me, masturbating, uh, I can't tell if I would think that's vile. Like that was my time that I thought I was not being watched and I am being watched like ugh, gross. But also if it makes you horny, it makes you horny. So I don't know. I can't I can't really tell how I feel about that. I know you're just doing it because it makes you horny and you're like, hoo he, 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 which I totally do. And honestly, I would probably do it too. Um, as I also think it's horny, like, you know, I get the idea of like watching somebody, um, not knowing they're being watched and like thinking they're sneaking, but you know, I think that's hot. So I don't know. What do you think, Corinne? I mean, think of all that. Just think of all the scenarios. Like if this was flipped, like if a man yeah, was just leading his okay. life, if he was horny. I mean, it's a huge violation of pri his privacy. There's absolutely no, to me, there's no gray area. It's a huge violation. The fact about whether or not he would be mad is 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 a uh, is not what you're is not what you're asking. You're asking, is it a violation of privacy? The answer yes. is a hundred percent yes. Right. Wh it, wh whether or not he would be mad, I don't know. That's your relationship, and that depends what what you guys have agreed upon. Pond. Like, yeah, there's a chance that he wouldn't be mad. There's a chance that he would think it was hot or horny, but like, you don't know. You don't the, know that. You're well, just, you're just assuming that he would be okay with yeah, it. And if I so, was, that's if the gray I, area. If I thought, but well, if I thought, but I'm, but I'm talking about, there's no gray area in the, is it a violation of privacy? A hundred percent it is. Yes. Correct, correct. Yeah. That's, that's no doubt. But I, I, I think I would be a little pissed off if I found out that what I thought was a very private moment for me. And that's why I could get off the way I get off is that it is private and no one else is watching me. I'd probably be pissed. 
Yeah, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't be happy. And like, it's, you have this kind of air of like, and girls have this a lot, like where when a girl does something, it. it's cute. And mm-hmm. when a guy does something, it's a federal offense. Yes. <laughs> and it's like not cute. Like, it's like, this is, this reminds me of when like the girl after the show uh, grabbed my nipple. Yeah. If that was a man, he'd be in cuffs. Right. You know, like, what are we talking about here? Like, uh, I, I, again, I think, I think it's kind of something that maybe you should have, before asking us, like if you're just going to take the advice blindly that we give, I mean, I think that maybe it's something maybe you could have talked about with your boyfriend, like theoretically. Well, yeah. And after the first time you did it, you could even say like, oh, I, I knocked and I asked and then you didn't hear me and I came in and you all, you still didn't hear me. I saw that you were watching porn and I got to be honest, I thought it was kind of hot. That that That's a oopsies. Okay. Yeah. But the continuation of doing it. I think anytime we continually do something in a relationship that our partner doesn't know that involves our partner, like we're in real murky territory. Yeah. I, for one, would not be happy. I mean, I, I definitely know of couples who would be fine with it and they would think it was hot and kinky, but like we all don't share the same moral code and compass. So I cannot make that decision for your boyfriend, but you already made a decision for him. You see, that's like the problem in right. my, in my book mm-hmm. that you made. And I mean, yeah, it's, and then it just does go along with kind of like the different expectations we have for different sexes. I feel like if the roles were reversed, everyone would be, you know, and I was even kind of like, okay with it. Everyone would be like, ah, ah, Corinne said that it would be fine if her boyfriend, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, come see us live. Um, guys, if you're listening to this on Luminary this week that it comes out, I'm going to be in Edmonton, Canada at the comic strip. God damn, that city is difficult to get through uh, to on an airplane. Um, I think that's why I stopped. so fucking expensive. <laughs> I think that's why I stopped. Like, is there a direct flight there? Nope. Yeah, I was like, anytime there's not a direct to a place, to, uh, flight to a place, I ain't going. Nope. <laughs> uh, and I don't blame you, but, but I am going. And so fucking come and see me. April 20th through the 22nd at the comic strip. Detroit, Michigan, House of Comedy, the 28th and 29th of April. Philadelphia, Helium Comedy Club, one of my favorite clubs in the world. May 11th, 12th, and 13th, I will be performing, headlining there, and recording my live album, which I'm very excited about. I'm also going to be in Toronto, San Diego, Fort Worth, Texas, New Brunswick, Vegas, Chicago, and Nashville, but those are far in the future. But just, you know, put a, put a little seed in your ear. And as always, you could sign up for my Patreon, five bucks a month. You get group lamenting over Zoom up to four times a month, and it's really fun. So, uh, yeah, come get shit off your chest. And And don't shit on someone's chest. And then, of course, uh, Without a Country comes out weekly. Uh, I think they've been releasing. I don't know. They're playing with the days. And I got got to be honest, guys, I don't know why. But we're just trying to get you the news a little bit faster because the news cycle is ever changing. I think maybe they're releasing Wednesdays, Thursdays. Now, who the fuck knows? You know, the way you're going to know is if you just subscribe, press subscribe. Uh, If you listen to the audio, press subscribe on Without a Country. If you listen uh, or if you watch it on YouTube, press subscribe. Then you're going to get an alert when it comes out. And you'll probably know before me uh but it's a it's a great way to ingest all the things that you need to know in a week in like a 90 minute helping and you know i'll talk you through it since a lot of you seem to be unable to consume the news because you find it so triggering and traumatizing even though literally nothing in it is happening to you directly um <laughs> yeah i'll help you through i'll hold your hand throughout throughout life and you can listen to it that way <laughs> And make sure if you haven't already, you rate and review guys who fucked on Apple Podcasts and follow us. Click the little plus sign. And that just keeps us at the top of the charts, which I don't even know if we're in still because everyone and their mom and their brother and their cousin and their great, great grandma has a podcast now. So, you know, it's a little, it's a lot. And a lot of these podcasts are comedy podcasts. So, you know, just help us out and keep us in the top 200. We love you. And mm-hmm. subscribe to us on YouTube. Do it. Uh, what's going on in your life? Uh, well, one thing I wanted to throw out to the listeners was... Um, I'm curious because I just want to see what kind of answers we get because human sexuality is so interesting to me. If you have an interesting or specific or unique kink, sorry about last night show at gmail.com. I'm just curious. Oh. Like, I want to do like a graphic of like just weird, weird in quotes kinks um, because I was having a conversation with a friend the other day who he liked, what was he saying? He likes when women wear pink underwear. And I was like, what the mm-hmm. fuck? That's fascinating. And I'm like, I do a lot of jokes on stage lately of like, just guys getting turned on by shit that I'm like, honestly, I wish that was all that turned me on. Like, that'd be so amazing. I didn't have to have like emotional complications. So I'm just curious. Sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Tell us what your kink is and we can put the most interesting ones in a graphic. That's, we, such, a, that's such an innocent kink, pink underwear. It yeah. Is. Yeah. It doesn't have to be innocent. 
I mean, hopefully it doesn't harm anybody. We uh, did an interview today that's going to come out where we talked about, uh, at you know, in some capacity of uh, fetish. Um, and it got me thinking about oh something that I didn't necessarily realize was a fetish until I started hearing it out loud. And I think I have a hand fetish. Mm. Ah. I think that's something that's like really the way that the, sense. the way that I heard that guest, which you'll hear in a few weeks, discuss uh, his fetish. It, it's not like ha women's hands turn me on in a way where it's like uncontrollable, where I guess people, some people have foot fetishes where they're just like, that's the money they maker for keep them. keep their dick in their pants, yeah. even though they can. Yeah. But the way this person, this guest was talking about it, I was like, you know what? I definitely have that with hands where it's something that I notice very quickly with women. It's like one of the first things I look for. Um, and when yes. they are bad, there's something about bad hands that does kind of like turn me off like ugly hands what constitutes a bad hand like what do you mean by ugly so there's there is this so funny because there is actually there's a, uh, a w now a woman who i grew up with um who i explicitly refer to as the bad hands wow like when, I, when i tell people about this uh -oh. yeah like and and they are like they're just kind of like they're a little stumpy yeah, stump they're the nails, like stump thumbs. the yes, like stump thumbs. Stump thumbs are a bummer. The hands are kind of smushed a little bit. Oh, smushed. Yeah, smushed with like, like short fingers. In a way, not like that bad, but like ish. Smushed like a child. Like, like I feel like all right. Look at if you look at my hands, hands. they're they're proportional. It seems like yeah, but some people have like more hand than fingers. Oh, you know what I mean. Yeah. Right, uh, right, right, right. So I right. think some people have like more hand than fingers. Does totally, that make sense? I totally know what you mean. You know how yeah. like some people it's have like more a, it's torso like when you blow than up legs. A glove, like yes. like a balloon. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. So but that's funny. Their hand. Yeah, some people have hands. It looks like they've been like flattened by a bulldozer or something. <laughs> and it does. That, that's <laughs> that true. Sucks. Okay. And then I think same thing with like flat fingernails. Like you can. Wait, there, what's the alternative to to a flat? No flat. Like like. How do I even explain? Like the this? nail beds are like pressed down a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, yeah I yeah, know like what you that. mean. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. no good. Yeah, like you guys both have good hands, so this is like bad to. Yeah, like Christine has got very sort but of I like. Done a mani in a while. But the, it's not necessarily the manicure, and I think this is the thing. Uh, if you're into, if this is something that I've like, seen a lot of people with about. disgusting hands that have a manicure, and I go, you're you're putting lipstick on a pig. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know. It's something that I definitely I look for a lot with women. I I never really thought of it as a fetish, but I think it's it's uh, true. The search goes on. You know, you for being brave enough to be honest about <laughs> well, that. Well, you you know you were asking yeah, Christina, yeah, so yeah. I figured I'd present. Well, I, I'm always yeah. I'm interested in like I always I always find it fascinating when people are aroused by like really niche things. Yeah. I'm not aroused by it, but I'm like I think I definitely I definitely care about like teeth. teeth like if someone sure. has gross teeth, like ugh, I don't really care about teeth. Oh, I hate it when people have every, bad teeth. Every guy I've ever dated, a lot of a lot of them have gross teeth. I'm like, eh, they don't smell like their breath isn't. That doesn't their bother you. I can't I mean, like crook, my fucking like mouth teeth, again. I'm like, eh, I, can't. I mean, eh, whatever. Really? Okay. Yeah, See, bad it's one breath thing, would bother me very bad because I have to touch the teeth with my tongue. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's one thing though. Also, if teeth like someone can have interesting teeth that uh -oh, aren't bad. That's never good. Like Do you know what kernels? I'm talking about? No, no. Interesting. Like, all right. So there is this. Jewel like, has interest in interesting teeth, but I, I don't think they're bad. Teeth. Or uh, like um, a gap. I like a Jewel's. Gap, yeah. I love gap tooth. Like a gap oh is kind of so like. Uh, I'd be disappointed if Jewel fixed her teeth. Yeah. So I mean, Jewel. Jewel, Jewel's teeth are a little, a, a bit too far. It for shows me, she but, struggled, yeah. you know, yeah. how God intended. <laughs> I like that. There's this Amazon commercial right now of this, uh -oh. of this like, uh, yeah, she, I, she's like, I guess she's like a high school student or whatever. Um, and it's, have you seen this with the commercial with the the girl with the mustache? Oh yes, who does I like have. the Freddie she, Mercury. Like, sees another picture of a gal with a mustache, and oh, she's like, no. you know what? Yeah, I love my mustache. Yeah, she's looking at pictures of like Frida Kahlo, and then yeah. it, she, it inspires her to buy this like Freddie Mercury jacket. Yeah, and she does. Oh, so this, she like, has like a girl mustache. Yeah, yeah, it's like okay. this like wispy sort of yeah. like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, at the end of the commercial, they do this thing where they have her. The whole commercial is about how she's like a little like unique you know, looking or whatever. Yeah. And she ha she smiles at the end and she has this like big gap in her teeth. And I feel like that is the way you define like interest. Like I this see. person's very in, I wouldn't consider her like conventionally attractive, but there's just, so she's interesting to look at. That's why she's she in a commercial. Right, interesting teeth. Yeah. And I feel like that is different than when somebody just has like crooked, fucked up, like right. fucked up teeth. Where, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. where like too much gum or too much, you know what I mean? Oh, too much gum. Horse, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had too much gum at some point in high school and then it just went away. 
to the point where my dentist, my orthodontist was like, you know, we can shave the the skeleton in between. Ah. And I was like, I didn't even ask for that. I didn't even think I needed that. And I was like, well, why? And he's like, well, because you have a gummy smile. I'm like, that's how they make their money. They yeah. point out something that was wrong that you never Fuck thought was you, wrong dude. to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how uh, they can make that bank. Capitalism, yeah. baby. Mm hmm. Oh my God. Um, but yes. And then, uh, so I want to know your kink. I'm just so curious. Cause I feel like our listeners have some, some interesting ones and you guys are very open. So I'd like to take advantage of that. And, um, man, uh, something happened to me that hasn't, that, uh, has never really happened to me before. And I, I just, if anything, I think it's funny, but I'm also, uh, towards the end, I'll throw a question to the male listeners. So I'm, I'm working on a show where we interview people on camera and uh, we all sit, the three of us sit at a table that's like a long rectangle mm -hmm. and we sit up against it so that our like stomach is like hit, like our rib cage is kind of hitting the table usually. So, uh, you know, you, you can't see what anybody's doing under the table. Like you can't see any of the wires, all that stuff. Oh, um, I already don't like the that cameras can going. see it though. Yeah. The cameras can see it. Um, and so in this, we, we had a day where we filmed three interviews back to back and it was like a really rushed day, but it was really fun because these people were really interesting. And the middle guy who's a little out there, but you know, the topic that we're talking, the topics that we talk about are, are out there topics. Um, and the editor emails me and says, Hey, can you call me like a couple days later? And I was like, yeah, what's up? Uh, and I, you know, I thought I'd try to call him and then it didn't, I didn't have enough time. So he's been trying to get a hold of me, trying to get a hold of me. And he's like, the, one of the guests, like during the interview, we can't use this interview because he's touching himself the whole time. And I thought that meant he's touched, he's rubbing his lav mic. And I oh go, my God. And I go, okay. And I watched, and I watched the interview and oh I, I was like, the audio sounds fine. What do you mean he's touching himself? He goes, he's, he's masturbating next, no. next to you underneath the table, the whole interview. Yeah, I was like, I'll say he's out there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. What? For an hour, I'm sitting next to this guy and he's just, he's, and it's, and I looked, I showed Justin Silver this because he's like, I told him about it. He goes, oh, that's awesome. I'm like, no, it's oh, not. His reply was, oh, yes. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he thought it was hilarious. Hear? I'm like, that's a very man response. But I showed him the video and he goes, yeah, that guy, like, he didn't have his dick out, but he was like, like, if this was the dick over the pants, he was doing this. Yeah, like subway nonsense. The whole yeah. Whole time. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I'm like, damn, doggy. I didn't, I didn't get, I'm like, my spidey senses weren't going off or anything. Like, I actually really liked this guy. Um, and he really liked me. Yeah. Uh, but I, how do you know he wasn't masturbating to your male co host? True. 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 <laughs> or just thinking about somebody else completely. Or like well, the top, the top, or like the topic that you guys were talking about. Honestly, for yeah. someone like this, I think it's like his kink is doing this in public. Period. Is it his kink or is it like a compulsion? Uh, I mean, either way, it's I'm, using, I'm using kink loosely. I mean, this is a uh, this crime that he continues to commit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm like, damn, he was jerking off the whole hour. We were talking to him. Compulsions you have control over, and if you don't, you don't you, got in fucking public like that. Like, I mean, like, I, I certainly don't want anything like that under the. That's not like fucking has any nothing to do with like OCD or anything. Right, right. That's right, like right. something you do in puberty. You, where you just right. like cannot control yourself. Well, well, that's like before like someone child, has like told you that you yeah. that is not inappropriate to do. But when someone that's told you that it's inappropriate to do, there is no argument and or no medical history, no science you can show me that says that there is anyone on this planet who has a disease where, where they, they literally their can't cock. stop yeah. masturbating during a podcast interview. Fuck you yeah. all. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. nonsense, and we've come become yeah. way too accepting. <laughs> I believe a lot of bullshit. Sick. He's just a fucking pervert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I yeah, believe a lot bad. of bullshit. Shit my day Stop. Like that one. I would, that I, one's nasty. I would love to hear uh, uh, off camera. I know you don't want to share, but like what the, what I'll his area video. of expertise is. Aliens. Oh. 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 That, well. That lines up. Yeah. You know, and I really want to. Really, there. You're not doing us any favors. You're not doing the community. The pro alien community, any favor, sir? Yeah, it's almost like this uh, guy was full really... of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> full of cum. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah. Wow, that's disgusting. Well, like, wow, ew, dude. I, but kudos to the fucking editor who, oh, like, yeah. went, it's yeah. he was a guy. He, he was handled a... it in a really uh, professional way. He totally did. And he's like, "I want to tell you first yeah. before I tell the other host because the host, like, they, they don't, they're not friends, but he knew of the guest, so yeah." Uh, so yeah, uh, it's yeah. that obvious when you see it on the video. 
It took me a second. That's why yeah. I was like, I couldn't tell if it was like, you know, some people like tug on their shirt, you know? So yeah. I didn't know if it was like a tick like that, but he was like pressing down on it like a lever enough that wow. I was like, mm, well, yeah, that's if a man's saying it about another man, exactly. I'm just kidding. Right. And it was a guy. Yeah. And I was like, if it stuck out to you as a man, <laughs> yeah. then that's jerking off. It's a good rule. Did you not, did, did, did the guest not know the frame of the shot? I don't think so. Oh wow! He should really check on that for 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 a future interview. You know what yeah. he should also stop. He should also do stop jerking off when he's getting interviewed. Just don't do that, guys. Don't do that. That's are you go, do you have a Are you going to say something to him about it? I think or my co-host should. I mean, I will. I don't give it. But you know what I wish though? Yeah. Oh, I wish. I wish. I, I would mean, love to turn back time. Yeah. But I so wish I caught him doing that while we were filming because I would have been like and cut do you want to mind you mind tell me what you're doing are you touching your dick there buddy why are you doing that that's fucking like i would have why don't you just have a follow-up zoom interview said you say you oh you needed some ad you had some additional questions about aliens and then do a zoom interview where in everyone's on it the alien in your pants and then say what say just what what does what about aliens makes you so horny <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's the thing. It's like we're yeah. all, uh, we just need to start directly, directly, just, yeah, to fucking handling this head on, especially in a For place sure. like in the in a, in a circumstance like this where you're not in danger. I don't recommend like doing this like if you're by yourself with a fucking guy like that no, because no, then no. you don't. I mean, know. This, but if you met this guy, he does not pose any threat to anybody. Like he's not a he's not a threatening kind of guy. He's well, he seems like he someone who would like shit. do some hack. You know, oh, maybe, oh. maybe there's other ways to hurt you other than physically. And For men, sure. And men have figured them all out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah men yeah. have figured them all out. And as yeah. technology changes, we will adapt and <laughs> figure God. out more ways. So proud of you. Wow. Guys. Put all that effort into changing. You to could do that. You could cure cancer, but no. Yeah, we're not gonna. Uh, no, I know. You could, I, I didn't think you would. Too busy coming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unless there's cum cancer. And then cum no cancer. Hope. Oh my God. How All right. You? Well, I'm just, I'm going to just put a little, a, 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 a little, I don't want to say ending, but just a pin in uh, the, um. the ongoing saga that we've been mm. talking about. First, I will, I will preface this by saying, uh, you, you know, you're in a bad spot when you text your psychic and she goes, I'm sorry. Who's this? <laughs> Is that a bad spot? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're psychic. She's psychic, know. and I like listen. I, I, you knew, you know. I, I I hate even using the word psychic. I I don't really believe in psychics. There is one woman who, oh. throughout the entire course of my life, I have met that I feel like does truly have a has a gift. She does not even use her gift uh, for monetary gain, which to me even folds into how organic it is. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not even 100 percent convinced with her, uh, but that's the only person I've ever met that I truly think has any sort of gift like that the rest is like just like you know intuition which is a real thing but i don't call that being psychic mm -hmm. um and so <laughs> That's so funny you texted her i uh, and you know listen so i i've been doing this you know this work on guys we fucked with relationships for a long time so at this point i am i'm quick to assess whether when i'm dating someone whether or not i'm gonna vibe with them we've been talking about that kind of on the show a lot about how i'm so I, i'm really fast now at knowing if i want to continue a relationship or end a relationship and as a straight woman, I feel like one thing I know is that it is exceedingly rare to meet a man, uh, a straight man, and think to yourself, I would be lucky to date this man. I can count on one hand and I wouldn't even use all the fingers every time I've thought that in my entire 37 years of existence. And that's how I felt when I was dating this person. I was just dating casually for a couple of weeks. You felt lucky. Uh, I felt lucky. I oh, felt like nice. I would be lucky to be in a relationship with this person. And that's it's, nice. like, it's like, I wasn't in love. I wasn't trying to make things move faster than they should have. Um, I just knew enough to recognize that this would be a man I would be lucky to date. Oh, that's nice. And uh and he would be of course lucky to date me. Mm -hmm. Uh and to me like that's kind it's of at couple. this point like what a great that's what a great match is. The rest is all shit that you can work on. Um and, but you know so but I can't compete with his like history. Uh and mostly because mostly and this is like I think a lot of our writers um, people who write into us have this it, it's because history is in your head so if you are involving an ex-boyfriend an ex-girlfriend Mike and I talk about our exes and I think in a different dynamic than Christina does a mm. lot on this on this show negatively uh, no but but I, I mean, but I obviously don't talk positive something about 
uh, our Get relationship with our exes is still bothering us in oh, a way yeah. that I don't think it's bothering Christina. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Um, Just the suing part, you know. So it's <laughs> like, and and the reason you know people new people can't compete with history is because a lot of history is in your head. Okay. So it's not how things really are. It's how you believe them to be. It's the feelings you felt at that time. It's, you know, the body keeping the score. It's all that stuff. Um, You like, you know, the glory of what was and it's it's, romantic. It can be romantic. And it's scary to charge toward the future. It's scary. We've all been there. You know, it's the same as the devil that you know is better than the devil that you don't know. No matter how hard you got, you badly you got hurt. Um, I think there is always something appealing about going going back to something that once was really good and saying, but what if we could just tweak this? What if this thing didn't happen? What if I could fix this or explain this or hear where she was coming from on this point? Like I've had that conversation in my head a million times with, you know, about really a certain ex, but it's like, why wouldn't I just you want to move forward. And I'm asking myself this question too. Why wouldn't I just want to move forward and like knowing that, oh, I can capture this amazing feeling because I've had it before. I've felt this connection with another person before. So I know it exists and it can exist beyond the constraints of this particular person. Yeah. Like, I think that's like really, you really need a lot of courage to go forth and do that, especially when you've been in the, you know, it's not like I haven't been open, me haven't been open personally to it. Like you, you know, and I, and I think I've been in relationships since then where I felt like, oh, I could possibly get to the level of connection that I felt with this person. Um, People are all also very obsessed with like time invested, you know, mm. like, oh, like five, like five years is like a fucking blip. Yeah, it's a blip, you know, but I've also been in relationships, you know, for two years, three years, five years. And you think to yourself like, oh, my God, like I committed so much. Obviously, I shared so much with this person, but like maybe that's all it was meant to be. Mm-hmm. Again, these are questions to like Ponder. this person, but also myself, you know, because mm-hmm. I've, I've felt these things, too. Um because like, you know, because the question you're asking when you're toying with history is like, there could be something better out there, but then the fear comes in and goes, but what if there isn't? Right. And what if I lose this person forever? You, you know? Out of love, not fear, baby. But like, you know, I think there is something to be said when you meet a guy who's not even 27 yet and he has a copy of She Comes First in his room oh, wow, that I think nice. he actually read. Like, that's a good man. That's a man yeah. of a higher caliber. This is someone who I felt like feminine and safe in his presence. And, um, yeah, so I mean, it's not. I don't. I don't want to say like, eh, this is like done forever, because uh, I. Who the fuck? No, I never know what the future holds. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, my my inclination of the way things were going and that something was disrupting the flow was certainly correct mm. because X did come back into play and. Yeah, I just was, I knew, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew women, it. Women know. Man. I knew it. Women know, all the women involved in this know. Like, it's so interesting. Like, we, when you're, it's, it, I, and you get like this too, right? When you're like sleeping with somebody, you're dating them, you're seeing them, whatever, like in any like romantic capacity like that, like, do you feel like, connect, like, almost like psychically connected with them a little extra than anybody else? It depends. I mean, okay. for, for some people I do, for some people I don't. Okay. Like, you know, I was... I did a lot of work this weekend to kind of like not disconnect from this person, but just like, I'm like, I can't get into some kind of a pattern where I'm like thinking about this a lot. Like, I think I just need, I just need to accept the fact that this is like a really good person. Um, accept the fact, like kind of still confused about why he made such a hard play for me. If he wasn't completely disconnected from his previous relationship, um, you know, cause I asked the questions that I needed to ask and I just was like given misinformation, not with, not maliciously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just like the person was maybe not as aware of his feelings, but of course right. I come into the picture X sniffs that out. Right, right, right. That, 
because yeah. it was because everything was going fine and like maybe his feelings weren't as tapped into previously but it's because there she had no threat so she didn't have to move faster beg for she didn't have to beg for forgiveness uh fast because she had there was no one else trying to get him then Isn't i move wild? in i move in there's someone else trying to get him i, I go to ireland for a week you sniff that I yeah, tried yeah, to yeah. make this point Women to him, know. but he, I, that just, you just sound crazy when you say that, but it's like, I, this is a hundred, this is a hundred percent what happened. Yep. yep I, I'm yep, sorry. Yep. You're not like separated from someone for six months. And then all of a sudden I just go to Ireland for a week. And then that's the week that you decide to fucking reckon, think about reconciling. Please, please yeah, yeah, yeah. stop. I literally do this for a living. Yeah. If the ex knows, <laughs> if the ex knows that the, her ex is interested in somebody else and she's still like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, I don't know if I'm done with that yet. Right. And, or that I'm interested in him. And I also think it's like, it's also funny to me because this also reminded me like never feel stu no matter how someone reacts to like you liking them, like you should never feel stupid for liking someone. No. If you like someone and like you're being normal about it, not like fucking stalking them and shit. Mm -hmm. Like if you're being normal about your like and you just have communicated to someone that you like them and they like respond to you like like I told you this was casual. That's on them. That's not on you. Oh, like yeah. you cannot fucking control. Anytime you enter a relationship and a relationship is any human interaction. I'm talking, I'm not yeah, talking any monogamous, you know, uh, uh, romantic relationship. Anytime you, you start seeing someone start having sex with them, start spending time with them. There is of course a chance that you will develop feelings and to like enter something and be like, we, uh, like nothing this is only casual is like you're only fooling yourself well, yeah and you're putting limitations on like, something before what? you even know what it's gonna be yeah it's yeah like like i don't know it's just funny to me because i'm like there's very few instances where i am in a position where like someone would like make me try to make me feel foolish and this is not necessarily what this person did or like act like why are you acting surprised that i like you like that to me makes me question like how you think about yourself right like right, what right, right. It, yeah it always it's crazy crazy listen it's like been a, i've been on this plan for a long time been dating for a long time good people don't come along that often uh, if you see a good person you got to try to make a move for it hell yeah what are you gonna do? Yeah, I don't the worst know. that can happen is it doesn't work out. You get rejected. But okay. I ain't afraid of rejection, baby. Get rejected all goddamn day. Um, you know who else isn't afraid of rejection? Our guest. Uh guys, she's a columnist, a TV reporter, a stand-up comedian based in New York City. Her book is out now. It's called You Can't Joke About That. Why everything is funny, nothing is sacred, and we're all in this together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Cat Tim. Tim. here with Kat Tim, who has a new book out that I'm so excited to talk about. It's called You Can't Joke About That, Why Everything is Funny, Nothing is Sacred, and We're All in This Together. Welcome to the show. So great to be here. I love the sentiment that nothing is sacred. No, nothing. It really isn't. Nothing and, is sacred. And the, when, whenever anyone treats anything as if it's sacred, it's never good. Like, good things don't come of that. Our love is sacred. Yeah, Ugh, and then it's gonna, he's gonna cheat on you, like, next week. Oh, that's how you know he already is. Yeah, but, 100%. But when people say you can't joke about that, I think that that's actually a hurtful thing to say because mm. all of the darkest stuff in life is the stuff that you need to be able to speak freely about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because everything I've gone through that's been tough, one of the things that made it the most difficult was I was also so isolated because people were afraid mm -hmm. when they were talking to me. Like, mm -hmm. am I going to say the wrong thing? And it's like, what I'm you know, dealing with is more serious. And now I don't need to feel like I'm making you uncomfortable just because my life is going the way it's going. Right. right. right yeah. Right, right. We were kind of briefly talking about this uh, on Instagram, but yeah, we both have a dead parent. Yes. And uh, I definitely experienced that like both while he was dying and now that he's dead. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. This thing that happened to yeah. me, a guy you don't fucking know, exactly. a guy realistically you don't give a shit about. Right. Uh, now me talking about it, which is healing, comforting, uh, a way to connect with him still is making you uncomfortable. 
uncomfortable. Fuck you. Exactly. Fuck you. And even when you you said to me, my dad died, my dad's dead. When I say dead mom or mm-hmm. mom died, they're like, that's disrespectful. I'm like, to really? whom? Yes. They're like, you should but say. she died. She, she is that's dead. true. She And they're like, say pass on. I'm like, you do not. Yeah. Fuck yeah. On. You don't know. She's it's dead. It's all about control. Yeah. These motherfuckers yes. are not. In, mm-hmm. they, they, they're so desperate to feel in control of their life. And one of the easiest ways to feel in control of yourself and your life, which is false, is to tell somebody what they can and cannot say. Exactly. I even posted uh, on Instagram that I was wearing my dead mom's skirt on Christmas. And like people were commenting, that's disrespectful. It's like, who is this for? You did not know her. Yeah. You know uh-huh. nothing. Uh, trust me, the fact that she's dead affects me more than right. it affects you. Also, the right. irony, the <laughs> so irony of it is that's extremely disrespectful to you to exactly. say that what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> and now we're in the matrix. And it's like also like I'm like I'm like telling like jokes about whatever, like making jokes about like my dad like wanting to fuck me or something. And I'm like, yeah, he he had brain damage and he did want to fuck me. And like yeah. that's a, I'm like, you think that was a fun day for me? Right. You think I like that? I think I was you think I was like, yes, daddy. Ooh, daddy you know? right. so hot. Like, mm. what the fuck are we talking about right now? It's like I am truly in a place right now, because I'm like I'm a year and a half out. So I'm like actually disgusted by how uh not in touch people are with the fact that we are going everyone you love is going to die yep. and you're going to die yep. just fucking grow up yeah you're yep. going to die you pussy I called the audience pussy the other day bitch. I said you guys I go I go you're pussy ass bitches and it's making me sick they laugh because they knew it's like it, it, there's something that's actually like repulsive to me about about how little people have thought about like what the the life like what we are in right now absolutely and how fleeting it is and you're not a lot it leaves you so unprepared for it because yes. when my mom was dying Everything in the media about death is you're going to have these beautiful, mm. long conversations where she's going to leave you with these beautiful sentiments that carry with you your whole life. Like, no. My like dad she, had poop under his fingernails. My, yeah, my yeah. mom was like, yeah. I'm thirsty. Sick. Can I have yeah. some ice chips? Yep. I don't feel yep. good. I'm tired because she's fucking dying. Yes. You're in the hospital. Of course. It's it's not pretty. It's ugly. There's like mm. the beeping and like either the lights are off the or they're like ugly sure and the breathing and the noises. And, yeah. and it's so gross and there's nothing beautiful about it. Mm. And like you said, it's happening to all of us. We mm-hmm. all have that in common but we pretend like it's not happening which hurts the people who are gonna go through it which is all of us literally every person honestly like obviously experiencing a death is so traumatizing and the grief and but like it is kind of cool if you think about like we all will know what happens when we die one day yeah that's fucking cool yeah i'm excited but we can't talk about it i am i I mean i when my mom died i had like a rough six months my mom died my grandma died the guy i thought i was gonna marry me broke up with me in front of my dad at coney island and it, it was it was rough he broke up with you in front of your fucking dad yeah yeah, yeah, it was bad. Like, I mean, what like, yeah, fuck? it was it, it was Ugh. bad. I'm better off now. Right. Of <laughs> at the time, though, I'm like, like fuck. That. Yeah. But I had just gotten hired at Fox a couple of days after that. And people would ask about my mom. Like, people would... I mean, I remember my dad came on. We did the Fox and Friends, like, cooking segment. And my dad, we, like, kind of trolled it. My dad, we, our recipe was this cucumber salad my dead mom made but then we did <laughs> but then my dad was like and for dessert he did pop tarts with ice cream and like we Ooh, stretched this delicious. whole segment of putting a pop tart in and ice cream and they didn't know what to do but <laughs> a lot of the people missed the fact that my mom did so the next year they're like oh cat's dad was funny let's pitch her mom for a segment You're like is it a seance and, <laughs> yes exactly so i had met dave navarro like through all this he was on our show oh, once nice. and his mom was obviously murdered and mm. he deals with it kind of the same way mm. making jokes i didn't know his mom was murdered yeah his mom was murdered Sucks. like when he was a teenager Damn. so we were like going back and forth like what should we say like do we say like i don't know could you really bring her back like my prayers have been answered or like <laughs> yeah. do i say like oh it might be really too much for hair and makeup or like <laughs> you know like what do you say but then also, but then i feel bad i feel bad that i have to tell this producer because she's gonna feel so bad that she asked about my mom when she's dead even though she was already fucking dead before i got the email she's right. been dead and, she, and, and the girl didn't know she didn't know and it's it's like you, you didn't like kill her again or anything right. I already knew and but mm. these are the exact standards that people put into place to be sensitive to people like me but they actually hurt people like me or like you like mm. your dad like you don't say that about your dad what do you don't tell me what I can say about my fucking dead mom yeah. or your dead dad yeah yeah it's a repulsive thing to suggest to somebody no yes. and I and I kind of liked that because I remember uh when because you are married now to, to not that guy from no, Coney Island no. <laughs> yeah. but I remember you kind of and this is vague so correct me but like you 
you posting about your wedding on Instagram and how obviously it was it's difficult uh, with a with a dead parent and you made some kind of comment about like how and don't tell her don't, don't like say that she's here with me because I don't believe in yeah. that and I thought that was really interesting like, yeah I don't uh, I have a different experience but mm-hmm. can you talk about that a little bit and like how it's annoying when people say shit like that to you because you don't believe it oh my gosh it's so annoying people are like she's here with you right now I'm like is yeah. she because she has not reached out to me right like has she reached out to you uh <laughs> like I did have a friend actually who's into like the psychic or, or stuff who says ask, she like, talks how do you to her know? Uh, yeah exactly I mean or like my mom she was diagnosed with a rare disease mm. like super rare three weeks later she died right and so people in the funeral saying things like at least, you know, you got to say goodbye. Like she didn't die in a car accident. It's like, what do you say to car accident funerals? Right. Like, at least she wasn't right. like we torn need, limb from limb in front of you here. and then set on fire while you watch. Like, People shut really up. really can't say, I'm so fucking sorry. I'm sorry, this shit I'm sucks. So they just this love blows. the comparison. They love to like, they love to just spin it so that it it could have been worse and you're fortunate for whatever <laughs> position you're in, you're yeah. fortunate and it all worked out a little bit better it's, for you. Society's yeah. inability to deal with any negative emotions. Exactly. It's just like, ah, get it's him like, away. And, and, uh, and I'm uh, like at that moment, obviously going through something far worse than whatever it is you're going to be able to say to me, like as we're both here above ground. Yeah. Right. Uh, and 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 yeah, it, a lot of the she's in a better place or it's like all these platitudes and nobody really says anything. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember talking to my sister where we're like, we don't my younger sister. She was only 19 when my mom died. Mm. And we don't know how to navigate this. Like when someone texts right. us, like a, when we were like a few months out, we're like, how long when someone says, how are you? And a text, do they mean, how are you? Or how? how are you? Right. Because right. if you do it the wrong the way, loss? if they yeah. mean like the dead way and you're like, I'm great. They'll be like, she's a sociopath. But if they mean it in like the, you know, how, how you are, and then I'm the like, loss. good. Then they're like, oh, she's a sociopath. But if you mean it the reverse way, they're like, oh, she's so exhausting. Like she needs to get over it. You, you, people don't know how to talk to you. Yeah. And if people just even admit that, like, hi, I'm a little uncomfortable. I still have two living parents. I can't imagine that fucking sucks. Like mm, that yeah, would be so honesty. much better. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. some honesty. Yes, just, absolutely. Uh, well, everyone has a timeline on grieving and like what they deem to be appropriate. So if you don't fit into that exact timeline, right? You know, even people with my own family, it's like, oh, you're so sad about that. Yeah, the death of my father yes, a yeah. year and a half later. I would say it's going to take a moment. Yeah, you know? some it's people like, live their whole lives being sad about the death right, of their yes. parents, and that's fine too. Yes. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just like, yeah. I don't know. Sorry, I'm not a fucking straight man. I don't have just some like insert girl here that I can put into yeah, my life. I don't exactly. know. What to Tell you can look over to your right and go, like, yeah, you want to <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I didn't get that memo. So you had three months notice of the death three of your mom. Weeks. Three, three weeks. Three weeks. Well, so Fuck, she, she had had That's breast tough. cancer when I was in college, which was completely unrelated. So they okay. were, thought it was cancer and they were like, oh, there's no cancer. We're all happy. And they're like, actually, it's a thing called tar- cardiac amyloidosis. And then she Fuck. died like three weeks after what, that. What is Shit. that? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it, your body makes this protein mm-hmm. that your liver can't break down. So it builds oh, okay. up in your organs. So for her, it was her heart. Like and it, and yeah. And Fuck. it just mimics the, like symptoms of other things she was still working oh so it was crazy it was like three weeks and holy shit and then again on on top of it no one knew how to talk to me fucking Mm -hmm. sudden Mm -hmm. that's really very very sudden and i i also current something you just said Mm -hmm. reminded me i had this girl that was like horrible to me in college we were friends she decided she hated me whatever it was like (laughs) one of those yeah and I, i she messaged me on facebook like Four months later, she's like, I just been struggling with what to tell you about your mom. And I'm so sorry. I'm like, I've not been thinking of you. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah people always have I, to step in and be like, I, she's I, obviously waiting for my yeah. words. I, I, I go, yeah, I hadn't, I did not notice. Like, and even when people like will uh, like find out a year later, like if I'll post, like, oh, it's been a year without my dad, I get messages from people. I had no idea. And it's somehow making it into them Ew, that they feel guilty that they didn't know. So they have to reach out for me. I go, this is for I had, That's for you. I exactly. literally did not care th- that you mentioned. I didn't even care for you to know. Yeah. yeah. Literally, this, this is not about you. Yeah, exactly. But then you feel like you have to console that person, right? Mm. You're like, oh, now this person's so uncomfortable. And it's like, dude, I'm already dealing with a lot right now. Yeah. I mean, when I was going after my grandma's funeral, which was three months after, I would, was going to do red eye. But this is way before I was hired at Fox. And I was flying Spirit and it was canceled. So the boyfriend Damn. that would, the boyfriend that happens. would, that was going to dump me at the time, we, our plan was, I still wanted to be on red eye. It was this big opportunity. So I did, we took like two trains and a couple Greyhound buses oh, wow. overnight. So I got to Fox with my suitcase. And so she's like, where were you? And I was like, my grandma died. I was like, just please don't ask. She's like, your mom's mom, your dad's mom. I'm like, mom's mom. And I'm like, don't do it. And she's like, how's your mom feel about it? And I was like, fuck. 
I was like, she's dead. She's yeah. And then dead. the whole green room was like, <gasps> yeah. I was like, guys, like I knew this when I walked in, like, yeah. stop it. Like, yeah. just please. Like I've, I've been on the bus all night. I feel like shit. Like, yeah, just, yeah it sucks. Yeah. I could have, I would have been much better if I could have made jokes about how like I'd spent way more time eating pierogi at a Polish wake in like a Hamtramck basement than anybody else who's 26 yeah. talk about it like that rather than treat me like that because you're it, it, it i'm already feeling so sad and then it isolates people yeah. and they think they're being sensitive that's it, that's so backwards they're yeah. not yeah so so what would help in those situations is just honesty like absolutely. if you don't know what to say just say i don't know what to say but i'm so sorry absolutely yeah. and the fact that i deal with it by making jokes about it because laughing and making jokes about it's things healing. that are, it's healing. It takes the power away from that. It's not that I don't care, right? It's obviously not that I don't care. Uh, it takes the power away from some of the scariest stuff in life. Yeah. And I think that the way things are now, it's very much like there's certain sacred subjects and you can't joke about these subjects. Those are the subjects that need that the mm -hmm. most because mm -hmm. they're the scariest things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what, are, what are the scariest subjects for you? I mean, death, definitely. Uh, I had a medical um, emergency <laughs> in 2020. He's the Keith's over there, my buddy Keith, because he was with me. I had an emergency. Oh, it's good to have your best friend yes. with you when you have a medical emergency. Well, That's the like next ideal. day, I had an emergency. My stomach hurt really bad, like really bad. This is November 2020. Excruciating. I thought I had like appendicitis or something. I went to the ER. I had a hole in my colon. <gasps> So oh, I had to get an girl. ileostomy, which is a fancy word for shit bag. And yeah, I yeah, did yeah. I didn't know that. I had no idea. Oh, I had no so they they're wheeling me into surgery. And I remember I was thinking, like, what am I gonna tell people? Like people are gonna treat and I like could have died. Not like hope I don't die on the table, but it, it was really, really rough. And I told pretty much no one. I mean I I was on TV with the sh with the bag, which it's just your small intestine that goes out of your stomach. A lot of mm. people don't know that. There's no valve. It's just oh, your right. intestine. And then, and then the bag connects to the small yeah, intestine. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I had it for five weeks. I'm all good now. But I was going on TV. And I was like, I can't tell anybody because then they're going to be like, oh, like, and I already feel like a weirdo. So what yeah. helped was, you know, my friends joking around with me about it. I actually planned uh, cats out of the bag party where were we gonna bong vuv oh, out of the unused shit bags which we totally did do you know like it was fun um <laughs> make it a fun time exactly i mean it was crazy because i kept having all these leaks too i was like nice. it was i was on i was wondering so like, like, what are you shit one second. like do you smell like poo that's the weird well, thing yeah because no, it goes right to the small intestine so it just it doesn't no, smell yeah. it's like a smoothie it's liquid mm. and i knew my he was my fiance at the time but i knew that uh uh, he was the right one for sure, for sure, because we he like we still fucked. Wow! Like, yeah. wow. Yeah. With, your, with your intestine hanging, I out had a with, like a spandex Hell, belt yeah. that would hold it in right. place. Yeah, yeah. And we had sex while I had a shit bag, and I nice. was like this. But there were these instructions related to sex, like this, <laughs> this, that, and there was bold, all caps, underlined. Do not attempt to penetrate the stoma, and I was like, that tells no, you someone everything you need to know about men, mm. because. The fact that it needed to be there Everything. and just bold it. Additional instruction. Don't try to stick your cock in. Yeah, a man tried to stick his dick. Someone had to oh go back in the God. hospital because someone's tried to stick the dick into somebody's open small intestine. Oh my God. But <laughs> yeah. And that doesn't even surprise me at all. No. Like being around this planet is for 35 years. I'm like, yeah, this guy definitely tried to fuck There's that. There's always many rules. Guys like even that. when I was a ma an elf at Macy's Santa Land, they, they literally had to give us special instructions that you can't take the elf costume home no matter how many times your boyfriend asks to fuck you. You anyway. <laughs> this is fucking Macy's. It all goes back. Yeah, it all goes back men. to men not being able to control themselves. <laughs> exactly. I yeah. I, I mean, the back. It, it is involuntary too, so you can't like. You, you just like see it move under your shirt because you, you can't oh, fart wow. either. It's just like. Oh just, wait, you don't fart? No. Weird. It just bubbles Whoa. up and it's under your shirt. Whoa. It was so gross. Life, life without farting. It oh, was. I, like it that. was really weird. It was really gross. And then I, when I went to go get the reversal, I was like so excited for this surgery mm -hmm. um and then i had some complications that were really bad like i was losing a lot of blood out of my ass oh and, and i needed to get a transfusion and the day that they told me this was the january 6th oh like Jesus i'm sitting Christ. in the hospital with keith Your who's like, yes he's here the capital's I, getting smashed i had a little princess crown on everyone was trying to make me feel better because it was also covid i couldn't i only got two hours of visiting a day uh, and like two people i was fuck. like alone the entire oh, time so and i was like this but we were laughing about it because i was like no matter what yeah <laughs> whenever anyone asks me where i was on january 6 2021 i'll be ass. like i was bleeding out of my ass into a bucket in and front of my buddy keith my <laughs> and like there was this curtain separating me between me and this crazy 
old woman who was like go, talking to no one in particular about how all those people at the Capitol were Russians. And like every time I'm like, <laughs> interesting I, theory. right. She was like, everybody liked Trump at first, but now they don't. And I was like, that's also interesting. I don't think it worked out like that. But then yeah, no, people still like them. Every time the doctor went in to like give her anything, vitamins, she'd call someone and be like, they're poisoning me. Uh, and, you know, I just. I had to be laughing through that. Yeah. You, you know, I had to be laughing through that or else I don't know how I would have gotten through it because yeah. that's, that was an extremely traumatic experience, especially because I had a lot of problems with like leaks and stuff because mine didn't fit properly at oh, first. Fuck, Ooh, man. It was really bad. Some hurdles. It was really bad. Keith, again, again, he's, he, you're, Keith's going to be famous. And sometimes, like, sometimes I talk about him like on Gutfeld. I'm just like, Keith. And people are like, who's Keith? But he like took me to get my nails done to get my mind off of it. But That's I'm sitting good. there with wet nails and then the bag like exploded. Oh, and I was no. like, and there's nothing anybody can do. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, the first time it exploded was actually the day that it was supposed, <clears throat> I was supposed to get married, but then the pandemic canceled it or oh, whatever. Okay. And I woke up and then it like exploded overnight. So but it exploded meaning like the, it the bag. The oh, bag, fuck, yeah. And man. so there was like, so you had to clean up sewage. It's disgusting. Yeah. And I, but I was, I was laughing. I mean, when, yeah, what are you going to do? I was like, day, December, this is in my book. I was like, December 6th expectation is like marrying the love of my life in an intimate ceremony overlooking the Hudson River. December 6th reality, waking up to realize my shit bag exploded. <laughs> Oops. <Oopsie, oopsie. laughs> like, but I, eventually I got the, if anybody ever needs a shit bag, eventually I got the correct sized bag and I didn't oh. have leaks and all of that but everything it when was I a journey when I looked up like I I have an ileostomy everything was like ileostomies aren't that bad here I am climbing Everest with mine ah! and it's like dude like I can't even get That's up like off the fucking, couch yeah 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 That's I'm never gonna climb has, Everest yeah I hate <laughs> like, people make these blanket statements about like yeah. this thing is it like pregnancy like women are like oh being pregnant's great I loved it I was horny I look beautiful and yeah. then other women are like I wanted to fucking die the yeah. whole time and it's like yeah let's Everybody's got different experiences. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody's experiences, I love hearing about them because it's like, oh, yeah, these are all, this is the scope of what can fucking happen to you with this one situation. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I had finally, but there were so, I was eating like multiple times. We had this nurse have to come over and help me try, learn to change the bag. And when you shower, you have to put like this saran wrap over it because uh. you don't always change it. And you have to tape all around. And Keith is, he's gay. I mean, okay, he's a gymnast. And he would tape around, but the, he would clean my intestine, but he wouldn't Aww. He wouldn't put the tape at the bottom because it was too close to my vagina. That was too gross. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's you know, so again, yeah, we were laughing. Yeah. And, yeah. But I, I didn't want to talk to anybody because people would be like, are you okay? Like, fuck no, I'm not okay. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? My small intestines hanging outside of my body. <laughs> like, I'm not okay. And I didn't want to feel any more isolated. And I, I just, it, every tough thing I've been through, it's just taught me the same lesson that the standards that are put in place to be sensitive to people make everything harder for the people actually going through it. It's yeah. not the people who have these problems that are the people whining and complaining. No, it's the people who have had like never had a pro like they've never had a problem and yeah. they mm. need to feel like they need to be somebody else's hero. Mm, but yeah, they're actually hurting people. No, it's yeah, like when yeah. you say hey wheels to like someone in a wheelchair when you're on yeah. stage at a comedy show and that audience gasps and like the person in the wheelchair they fucking it's great. loves it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like yeah, because they're they're being they're being treated like everyone else. Exactly. In a comedy Everyone's audience, a which is like that you are going to be roasted exactly. if you are in a comedy audience. So if I didn't roast that person, wouldn't that make them feel more out of place, more yeah. awkward? And it would be in the room. It's common sense here. <laughs> yeah. What What made you want to write a book about uh, what we you can and cannot joke about? Um. So when I was home after the first surgery on a lot of oxy my dad and i were on the phone he was like you're 32 i don't know what you haven't been through and i was like well everything you go through the good thing is you're automatically building a connection with everyone else who's gone through it too but then i kind of realized what's the use if we can't talk about it sure. yeah i mean i feel like it's always presented as like speech versus sensitivity but really i mean being able to express yourselves is how you make those connections with other people. And if you make a joke or you talk about your experience, then maybe someone else can relate to that and make that other person feel better. Yeah. So I think it's just the debate is wrong. And it's true. You can say whatever you want and fuck everybody else. And I totally believe that. But it's not always that way. It's also how we can get to know each other better and how mm -hmm. we can connect with each other. If there's no limits in how we can express ourselves. There's no limits for how we can connect. And mm. there's also like I feel like when when a person gets offended um, over something specifically, something a, a comedian says, I always I'm like, do you see the irony here? Yeah. It's a 
fucking joke. I know. But, um, you know, you can go one of two ways. And I, I'm i always, when I've had comics say stuff on stage or I've watched specials where I'm like, ooh, ooh, sure. ooh, 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 oh, I don't like that. But I love that. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, why don't I like that? Why do I have a, why do I want to say fuck you, dude? Like, you piece of shit, you know? And what, what is that play here? What's the war going on in my head? Um, but you could be curious about being offended instead of, instead of lashing out and, uh, feeling like you're allergic to being offended. Yeah, and I think it's also, there's such a difference between saying, oh, my feelings are hurt, and saying, my feelings are hurt, therefore, fuck you, you should lose your job. I mean, that's yeah. not just saying your feelings are hurt, that's trying to exert power and control sure, over another exactly. person. Yes. There's such yeah. a huge difference. And there's this refrain now that if some if something someone's offended, they're always right, and intentions don't matter. But like, of right. course they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If someone's trying to make a joke, they're trying to make people laugh, versus someone who's just like saying racist shit because they're racist. Right. Mm-hmm. How is that not different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. completely different. And no one, like, no one is asking what a person's intentions are. Well, no. The second they get offended, they're just high up in the sky and about it, and yeah. high and mighty about it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm an emotional person. I share my feelings, but that's different than someone. I think people look for things to be offended by because that makes them feel powerful. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're not as successful as they'd like to be, but at least they can maybe take down somebody who is. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. And I also feel like for me, I mean, I don't like, I think that toxic positivity is something that's been a big issue. I went through it with the ostomy, but even just like <clears throat> this whole movement of everything about your body is beautiful and everything about your face is beautiful. Nobody believes that. I know. Right? It's such a, I, I talk about that horseshit so, a lot. Yeah. Body positivity, positivity drives me nuts, especially as some, being someone in this industry where you literally see like a, a fiscal difference in a paycheck based on it. It's like, yeah. well, it matters to fucking someone. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's been way easier to just make jokes about the stuff that I'm insecure about because Mm -hmm. then like anything else it takes away its power Mm -hmm. I mean this body positivity shit's been around for decades and decades and people still hate their bodies people still hate their faces people still hate whatever and I really think that you feel even worse when you feel like you're supposed to be able to be optimistic so Mm. then you're judging yourself for that right yeah they're not even thinking about like do you feel good in your body yes then fuck it yeah exactly fuck it that's it. You have to be like, I love this. I yeah. love this. I'm like, no. Also, we're, we're missing the bigger point. A human body is yeah. one of the most incredible things on this fucking planet. Like your brain, the synapses and the nerves and the like internally, like, and you going through a medical experience yeah. like that where your organ was half out. You're Literally. Like, Holy shit. My body is capable of like doing some bad shit, but also like healing and, and like figuring out ways to kind of go around a hole in your colon. Like, I know. That's amazing. I know. I literally didn't really know how the digestive system worked until right. then. <laughs> yeah. I like really learned. And you learned about like dopamine and your yeah. receptors and all this shit. And you're like, we are missing the point about bodies. We're just looking at, are you fat? Are you skinny? Like, <laughs> I think we're missing the point on a lot of things. Quite yeah. Frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so what, how I imagine, you know, get, uh, getting a, a role on a Fox show, not a role, but like yeah. being a voice on a Fox show it gets a, a lot of, you get a lot of feedback from that Ooh, you what, do? Yeah. what has that experience what been like? like both with both people who are fox viewers people who are maybe like more liberal because i'm like you identify you're libertarian yes, right? yeah yes i'm absolutely libertarian and it puts me in an interesting position because i mean i just like small government but that also means i'm like very i'm very socially liberal mm-hmm. uh so i feel like there's a lot of the viewers who may not like that like i'm i'm like I'm just like aggressively, for example, I'm aggressively pro drag queen, mm-hmm. uh, like 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 very much so. I'm vi- you know I'm pro choice, I'm mm-hmm. stuff like that, and they'll go after me, and I just like don't care. I believe what I believe. Sure. But then there's people on the other side who'll be like, oh, she works at Fox, therefore I know everything that I need to know about her, and it's like, right, it's like, you no, don't no, no, actually. No, no, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you spent like two minutes around me, you'd realize that it's not. I'm not. It's not what you think. I mean. Uh, it, it's it's kind of wild because everything is so hyper partisan now where you're mm. either on one side or you're on the other side. Mm. And I'm just not. I, I think that there's crazy shit being said and done by both sides. I mean, also, people in the power news in general, yeah. no matter what the fucking network is, it's fear mongering on purpose. Yeah, it just is across the board. Yeah, absolutely. 24 hour news cycles fucking ridiculous like the fact that we have those and we have multiple ones it's like we're not trying to make the population of earth less stressed in any way 
And the show that I even do is is different than anything else on Fox. It is a comedy show. Well, Godfather is like one of the highest rated late night yeah. shows, right? Mm-hmm. I, someone was telling me about that the other day. I'm like, oh, fuck. That's yeah, great. we've had like many weeks where we've been at number one, yeah. which is, is it's wild. It's it's wild. And it's also, we've it's different. I mean, I'm he's more conservative than I am. He's still like, he's agnostic. You know, I'm agnostic. He's not like super socially conservative himself. But we've had like Roseanne on, but we've also had Marianne Williamson on. Mm. Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's been like quite the spectrum but it has been interesting where I'm this individual who's on this show but I don't feel like I am an individual because it's like oh she works at Fox right right I think it's great like one of the things the reasons I I I really like you and I love following you is because I think you're doing like the hard work that no one wants to have you (laughs) which is having your own opinion on a network that is known for more like a a certain extreme viewpoint and like that's where we really need a you know a pro drag queen voice we don't we don't need a pro drag queen voice on Vox everyone (laughs) already they're all pro drag queen it's it's annoying it's like oh, we're patting ourselves on the back for being heroes for saying the thing that everyone already agrees with. Like, it's well, pathetic. And it's, and it's, yeah. We need more examples in our society of civil discourse. Yes. Like, like when, when Bill Maher has, Bill Maher will have a guest on usually at the top of his show that, that's somebody he doesn't agree with. And sometimes he's a little like, but yeah. but I really like that. Like, yeah. I, like, you're like, oh yeah, two people on opposite ends of a of a belief system can talk to each other. Yeah, absolutely. I think, well, Greg, actually, he did, he did Bill Maher's show. I mean, it's... Well, I, first of all, I mean, I dress in drag every day, obviously. <laughs> I mean, like I, my bra that I'm wearing right now is so padded that Keith actually wore it when he did drag. <laughs> my like, I'm wearing hair extensions, the amount of makeup. I mean, it, it's... <laughs> And it's also, what's the point of a platform for a platform's sake? Just to yeah. like be in this echo chamber and everyone tells you how great you are. Yeah. Right. I, I don't understand. Some, a lot of people like that, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah. It's like, but it's some of these people. I mean, I had like one comment. It's like, she likes, like, I was talking about how much I like RuPaul's Drag Race. And they're like, you, she should be fired. I'm like, but you're the same person who would turn around and call someone a snowflake mm. for something else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The hypocrisy is insane. It's, it's wild. It's but, insane. But there's people who won't even sit down and have a conversation with me because I work at Fox News. Mm. Wow. Which yeah. it's like, OK, well, all right. But yeah, <laughs> and I assume they don't know that you're the liberal voice on a show. Yeah, I'm libertarian, very socially liberal. I'm like super pro immigration. I mean, the only thing I'm conservative on is like fiscal policy. I'm like really fiscally conservative and guns, mm-hmm. which but yeah. other than that, I'm I mean, I'm trying to think of another thing, but I'm just small government. The less government, the better for me mm. and I'm like, I'm very pro decriminalized sex work. I'm very, all these things that make people uncomfortable there. But then people are like, oh, she works at Fox. So she's a bad person. And this right. And that. So you get, you get I'm shit like, from I'm both. like, don't you work at a bank? Like, like, you know, like, do you, I, ever, do you ever get like, cause some Fox news viewers are fucking nuts. Sure. Uh, I was raised by two of them and uh, they're, they're, my parents aren't the, my parents love Fox, but they're not. Some Fox news viewers are like, they'll like show up at your home kind of shit. So do you get like death threats? Oh my gosh, I've had to put multiple people in jail, yes. In jail? <laughs> yeah, one of them. Wow. Yeah, the, because you, this, it's, I mean, they're all men, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it's like, man, like, like, you like, I, say, yeah. I, I actually respect my, like my dad's political views. I, he's always told me about them since I was a kid and I yeah. really respect that and like he kind of educated me on politics and stuff, but like, man, some of those folks Yeah, exactly. no, nothing to lose in a yeah. way and they feel like a loss of control. So I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's crazy people on all ends of the extreme right. for sure. I think just also just being a woman on TV or a woman on the Internet. No, it's yeah. like people are like, OK, well, uh, I, like, you know, it's like the incel shit and the yeah. crazy shit. And what happened with the guy that you went that went to prison? Oh, uh, well, he's he unfortunately out now. But oh. he was. Yeah, I think they're watching him pretty close. He had the attempted kidnapping charge. So I'm like, he just wasn't good at it. He didn't attempt to kidnap me, but somebody else. He was like, a he already done time in prison. How oh. did you know? How how did he get on your radar? Because he was emailing me like, I mean, triple digits, triple digits of that, like and oh, videos and like shit. just obsessed. He's done well. Want to smash my sister's face in. And like, she oh. doesn't even, you know, she's like, she's, leave her out of this. She's just, you know, she like works in HR in Michigan. Like, leave her alone. Oh, <laughs> like, she's fine. Yeah. People I, are looking for a punching bag because they can't handle their own feelings. Absolutely. And it's also, I mean, I've uh, because my views don't fit into either box. Pretty much, every, a lot of people struggle to have conversations with people they disagree with. I disagree with pretty much everyone on something. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, I mean, there's people who are conservatives who are my friends. I also have people who are like super left wing Marxists who are my good friends, and everybody in between. And it's there's people who won't have those conversations. And why? Uh, yeah, they their their lack of curiosity is is disheartening. Yeah, it's like what like what do you think? 
the Fox News building is like? Like, do you think, you know, like some of these people, like, do you think that everybody here believes the exact same thing? Right. And they don't. We like, we don't. Right. So so often we'll get the comments, like uh, feedback on this show specifically where uh, someone will write in like, I disagree with like a lot of what you guys say, but I listen anyway. It's like, do you want a a, a hero's award? Do you want a lapel (laughs) pin? It's like, yeah, that's the way like life should be. Yeah. If you found some random like chick on the internet, internet and you just agreed with everything that she said you don't have your own critical thinking skills exactly like we exactly. all should have pretty different points of view based on exactly how we lived our life and our experiences but be open to learning things from others Absolutely. Yeah. and also just because you say you like our show i don't assume that means you agree with everything i say that's they don't, they don't that doesn't go hand in hand no like it doesn't anyway. and yeah. then the reverse is the worst where you get the mess or i do where it's like i used to like you until right oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I get uh, until this one one thing that I said that you don't agree with, yeah. and now I'm dead to you. Like you don't you, represent me anymore. After I hear who said I was supposed to represent you? Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. After years, they'll turn their back on you because you said one thing that didn't fit into their made up moral uh, structure. Abs- absolutely, like it's the dumbest stuff. I'll be like, yeah, I'll call people whatever pronouns they want to be called, and they're like, what? And I'm like. Yeah, yeah I don't he, give a shit. what's the point what's of the, not? What's the point of not? You get You're one just life to live. Being rude and disrespectful on purpose, dude. If, if you have one life to live, we're like you said, we're all gonna die. And if you're yeah. happy living life where I call you they, then that's fine. Yeah, that's <laughs> if I can make you happy by calling you they, <laughs> that's great. There you go. I'm glad you're happy. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. affect me any. It's like my views are just generally well, do whatever you want as long as nobody else is getting hurt. Yeah, I think that um, as a society, we're really bad with. D- effectively dealing with stress yes if we were better at dealing with stress then i think that all these pu- i need a punching bag it wouldn't you wouldn't want a punching bag because you're not stressed yeah i've i've seen things on tv and in podcasts where i've been like oh i really don't like what that person said i've never told them <laughs> i don't think I have it either. is possible i yeah, know it is crazy it is you can just like what somebody says and then you shut the fuck up just yeah. keep living your life <laughs> yeah it's wild I mean, People didn't, this is just new, like relatively new. Uh-huh. People used to have to mail letters. Yeah. Right. And then someone would like handle your mail. I, I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, man, email. We didn't always have it and we got shit done. Fucking, I, w- I wish we could go back to that. Ugh. There's a whole book I was reading about that, A World Without Email. Ugh, it actually, it's nice. kind of like the, the argument is that we are really not any more productive because emails are like, you're doing things in such small pieces that you're constantly checking emails instead of actually getting the work done. And mm. and it, the checking emails makes you think that you did work, but you didn't do yeah, any you didn't. work. You just answered emails. You just answered emails and basically uh, delegated the work to others who are also not going to do it. Yeah, it's... Because <laughs> they're it, too busy checking their email. Yeah, that's... I mean, I think that we, we are... And I I think we also have a communication problem. And again, you know, that's really what my book is about, because for me, comedy has been a sort of religion to me. And that's mm. what my last chapter is about. I was raised like super, super Catholic, like really Catholic, Ooh, like Catholic, very fuck motherfucker, up. very Catholic. <laughs> what, what, what flavor are we talking about? Like what Polish. Um, okay. <laughs> like uh, we had St. Benedict medals over all the doors. Whoa. The devil wouldn't get in. I, I wouldn't play with the Ouija board. I was afraid the devil was going to get me. Uh, I mean, so my mom was mostly really Catholic, but she was also really vulgar. It was it was quite interesting. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, but she was like very serious about this stuff. So, but I t- I believed it. So like I would go to confession and I would like say what my sins were. Like even when I started masturbating, like I, like at that end, like you know how weird that is. Yeah. When you're like in middle school and you're like telling this guy, I felt because I thought I was gonna go to hell. That's right. so fucking weird. The concept yeah. of confession oh, for children is actually disgusting. I, I, yeah. I, I did. I lived that, and then you know I'm no longer religious, and I also they think drag queens damage kids how about a fucking priest pro- waiting to hear about you masturbating I, that's a little more damaging you know? totally look i again i think back and i'm like i wrote about this in my diary and i was so scared that i was mm. gonna and i write about yeah. this in the last chapter of my book where i was like i think that's so messed up they literally tell you if you masturbate and then you get in a car accident on your way to confession you're going to hell like anybody you're telling that to me Religion and i'm a child so much more damaging to children than a drag queen. I, it's crazy oh, God. Oh, God. but i mean but if you think about it the way we're treating the standard for what you can and can't say in comedy is actually stricter than Leviticus yeah. right now, which is like yeah. not a chill book. It it's very fire like and brimstone it. because it says an eye for an eye. Yeah. But with com- ah, with an eye for an eye, that's so fucking toxic. But with comedy, it's worse because it's like I don't think anybody could honestly tell you the worst thing that they've been through is having to hear a joke they didn't like. Mm, correct. But some people would say the worst thing that they've been through is to- telling a joke that 
was wrong in right. the eyes of the wrong people. Like it, it, like it completely destroyed their career. It completely oh, yeah. destroyed their well, career, yeah. their what, lives. What happens? What happens when a comedian? And this happens across the board. When a comedian does something that the public deems crosses the line in any way, in any level, that comedian is subject to verbal threats, threats on their life. Yeah. Like we, I've gotten rape threats, death totally. threats. I've had yep. the, the photo of the outside of my apartment building tweeted at me. I'm yeah. like, so that's, this isn't worse than what I, wh- are you fucking, I know what is happening, but you're like the good person because you're fighting up against this thing. Someone right. said this joke. Somebody made it's all ego based. Calling a comic out is so controlling. and so ego based. And so dis- it's so like, everything's wrong with it, but the person doing it just doesn't see that. Yeah. And comedy again, it's healing. It brings people together. It, you know, can add meaning to experiences. I mean, like a lot of the ones we've talked about, uh, it boosts, you know, your serotonin. It, it brings people closer. Yeah. It, through You can send memes to your friends and that brings you closer. But also a like com- laughing with a group is healing. Yeah. And yeah. A, a comedy show is just someone standing up there with a microphone talking about life and everybody's gathered there to listen to it. Yeah. And I just it's the way I've dealt with everything. And I feel like it's really kind of being threatened right now and not in the way that people talk about it where it's just like oh you know it's people on the left can't handle jokes and i there is definitely something to that but i'm (laughs) but i'm talking about everything i'm talking about everybody because everybody has something that really will bother them to hear someone joke about yeah but i'm saying so the fuck what yeah Mm -hmm. because what's worse is to not feel like you can make jokes that might help you and that might help someone else or you might need to get through a tough time yeah yeah man I just no, I just I I was like hmm. I was like what a mo- what a moment we'll leave it. <laughs> um, can you actually? T- uh, I want to talk a little bit more about being libertarian because I think it's one of those uh, political uh, affiliations that is. Uh, a lot of people roll their eyes at, which yeah. then uh, that's which then annoys me because I don't really think that you have a, like these people who are rolling their eyes or immediately uh, not paying attention to anything you say because you said you were libertarian mm-hmm. it is uh, annoying and, and closed minded. These people who are supposedly so open minded, mm-hmm. I am talking about liberals. It's mostly you who are doing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so because because it, it's interesting because you know the, I am not I'm not like super well versed in um, liberta- libertarian viewpoints, but. But anytime I hear someone talk, I go, some of this sounds, this, this doesn't sound bad or crazy. Can you expand besides like, besides like uh, small government, some of the things that are important to you as a libertarian? Totally. I feel like also a lot of people call themselves libertarians when they're really not. Mm. So I feel like it can get mm. kind of used and abused that way. Yeah. It's basically just the individual, like the individual rights, the right of the individual to make their own decisions, but also be responsible for themselves. I, it doesn't mean that you don't care about certain issues like homelessness or, you know, poverty. It just means you don't trust that the government is the best way to handle that. Mm, okay. They don't have a great track. Record, they don't have a great so. track record. So I just, I, I just don't trust the government. Also in foreign policy, I'm super non-interventionist. I'm super anti-war uh my husband he was in afghanistan in our first date i was like the war like you fought it like for why and he was like (laughs) i took his face and he was like i agree with you he said that as somebody who went there and then look at what happened i mean with like all that money and all that time and all those lives fell apart you realize like when anybody goes to war for their country they don't they have to be persuaded and convinced and it's like i bet if you asked any soldier in any war it's like do you really dying for your cut like is that really what matters to you or is that sold to you i mean a lot of it has been the government lies to us about how well things are going in certain wars oh. and like you can't say you, but if you say oh you know i don't know if we should be over there then you're not patriotic well, exactly it's like, and right. that, that kind of goes it's really under the umbrella of things that you can't you can't yeah. even talk about yep. because it's like you're not you're not saying that you don't feel for these mostly you know young men but also young women who are going there and, and giving their lives for the country but i think like you need to be able to stop and ask but why did they have to sacrifice right. their life to begin with yeah why were right. they put in that position by right. their government unfortunately yeah the military industrial complex makes a lot no. of money uh yep. but I, I mean i feel like also just if i had to sum it up quickly i'd be like free markets and no judges would be my views because mm-hmm. i mean i'm for decriminalizing sex work i'm like very pro ho mm-hmm. i'm for decriminalizing all drugs i mean your your pregnancy is not my business. All all of those kinds of things. So mm-hmm. there's, it's you know, free markets, no judges. The right of the individual to make the decisions for themselves. Right of free association, all that kind of stuff. 
which yeah. is very people say libertarian is just conservatives who you know smoke weed it's like no it's not it's what, about, <laughs> what are your views on like jails yeah so i think that we have like a huge over incarceration problem yeah. right yeah. i think that anybody who not to me non-violent drug offenses aren't crimes that's insane. Yeah. those even like if you're a dealer like that's an economy i, yeah, I feel yeah. like if you think that you know market forces don't apply when it comes to drugs just because drug you think drugs are bad that doesn't mean then you're not a capitalist i mean mm. people if they want to buy drugs they should be able to buy drugs at a bodega and you make that own choice and you deal with your own consequences but yeah. putting someone in jail for something they've decided to put into their own body is crazy and a lot of people don't know their own rights e either which is why the last the chapter of this book it's not really a chapter but this whole book is about you know speech and speech and speech and then i just added like the little appendix that you also have the right not to speak, just a PSA, and it's just advice for interactions with police officers. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's important. Because, like, a lot of people don't know that. The yeah. cops will say, like, okay, you know, if you talk to me now, that's the best thing for it. Nope. Yeah. Never they trust the police. Never. The you don't, like, legally lie to you. Yeah. And just not, I mean, they could kill you, and it's fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I have all, like, that's the end of my book. You've been stopped by the police in public. You've been arrested. A lot of people don't know their rights in, yeah. in that sense. Fuck, man. <laughs> so that's like what being a libertarian is. But again, a lot of people just say that. And I think the biggest misconception is that people who are libertarian don't care about people who are struggling with things. It's just that you don't think the government has all the answers. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when have they been great? No, it's like, I, I mean... I, we all of us we live in New York. We pay so many taxes, and like, where does it go? Right. Yeah. The, 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 every time I drive over a pothole, I'm like, fucking air. Where does it go exactly? Because um, yeah. my yeah, my question, like, based on what you just said, would would less be like, oh, you don't care, and it would more be like, I totally agree with you, and I have the confidence that I can live my life based on my own decisions. But then you re remember all the absolute morons that you know, and what like how their mistakes would then go on to impact your life and like what what about those people who can't who like truly do not have the tools to control like an their addiction own, and then they their drive. own life for whatever the reason yeah i totally well, get that but that's yeah. like natural selection they die off i also but they could also the dumb kill you die because they're right drunk behind the wheel or right. you know that kind of a thing I, that yeah, we really th in america you, I, I feel like you need protection i mean certainly in my life that's who i feel like i need protection from <laughs> right it's not myself it's other people yeah. right i also yeah. feel like with the way things are now it's not like it's going great i mean right I, <laughs> it's it's right. like these people, right. well, I'm thinking of all those people in my life and I'm like, they're still fucking up pretty bad. Yeah. And I think obviously it would be private, would need to, you know, wouldn't be public assistance. It would need to be private. And the capitalism we have now is crony capitalism. It's like corporations are just an extension of the government, basically. Mm, Everyone's yeah. doing favors and for each other. Monopolies are illegal. No, it's they're like, fucking not. No. When Facebook bought Instagram and I was like, there's so many examples of these companies buying so many other companies and you're like, no one's going to. Yeah. Say anything, and, huh? Well, also, how do you you go into government? You're supposed to be a public servant, and yeah. then, but how do you all get, get so off rich? Private jet. You yeah. get so rich. Yeah. So I don't think that the government is clearly not working in terms of actually helping people because they just the, they want to stay in power. I mean, that's yeah, the way humans power are. Corrupts. It's a human truth. Power yeah. al it almost always corrupts. And I also just it, when I think of what's moral and what's not moral, I just don't. I think that things that are illegal, things that are pe people are not allowed to do it's actually immoral to not let people make these choices for themselves with the one life that they have. Yeah. I actually agree with that. I, th I think that's like something that I've been kind of try trying to undo, like the the difference between like right and wrong. It's like, that's just something we kind of arbitrarily decided. I don't know, like who who really told you? Like who's making that decision? Right. Yeah. You don't know. Right, absolutely. I mean, so many people who are in jail for things that are don't hurt anybody except sure. themselves. Sure. And also it, it's not like that's a deterrent. Like the reason I don't smoke crack is not because crack's illegal. It's because <laughs> right. it's because I finally just kicked vaping uh, after like eight years of breathing more vape than air. I don't think crack would be a good move for myself. Like I think I'm living a very different life. And I think most people who don't smoke crack, it's not just because like, oh, if I, if I would love to get some crack. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 uh, right. And I, it just it keeps people down. And, and I think also we don't have respect for drugs. We use drugs to escape without understanding what they do to our bodies. And on it, I, I read this book about the, from this written by this professor who like does will do heroin like microdose. Heroin, oh, I know Carl, Carl Hart. Yeah, I know I him. I yes. love that book. I love Carl Hart. I love that book because yeah. he's like, you don't fucking know. Right. Like, yeah, smoking crack is not the best way to ingest it. And, and the amount that people do is way too much. And the, But when you use drugs as an escape or as a band-aid, that's where, and that's what every, 
99% of the population does. He was actually on the Gutfeld show. It was us and then Harris Faulkner and then one of the hosts of Fox and Friends nice. and Greg and we were all talking about drugs. Yeah. And he uh, said he microdosed heroin and I was like, wait, he what? does. He's like, Tell he's like, more. that's really interesting. Yeah. He's like, there's, you know, sometimes you're just sitting by the fire, you do a little line of heroin with your wife. And it's like, I doesn't sound like my business. If that's yeah, what you yeah. want to do with your wife. I actually was on Fox uh, for a segment about him where it would have like the dun 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 oh, music. Yeah, they were, yeah, yeah, and they were like Columbia professor him. does heroin and I and it like cuts to me and I was like, I think that's fine. Like yeah. it sounds like his also, business. Columbia <laughs> pro- Columbia yeah, professor. Exactly. This motherfucker isn't some Joe Schmo bullshitter. Yeah, like should he be, isn't it crazy that he's he's teaching kids he does heroin? I'm like, I think it's crazier that people get locked up for doing this if they're right. not hurting anybody. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Like if you can do heroin but and be an Ivy knows, League professor, right. then why I'm, that, oh, I'm not going to tell you to stop doing heroin. Right. right. It's also like, have you ever met a Columbia student? Like <laughs> kids, you know, they don't need, pre- we need protection from them. The most fucking mm. obnoxious people on the planet. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, thank you so, thank much, you so much for, for being on the show. Thank you so much. It's been so great to be here. Yeah. yeah I love you. having you on and this conversation was great. So yes. obviously pick up Kat's book if you're open to uh, a, a voice that's not your own, Um. which, you know, you, you guys be. have been on, uh, on watch for that for a while so you can't mm-hmm. joke about that cat tiff uh in stores is in stores now right yeah we're already out and uh we can watch you on Gutfeld. yes and we can follow you online yes at cat tiff instagram all social platforms and i'm gonna be doing some shows in chicago and dc so awesome Yay. link in my bio for everything Yay. amazing thank you so much for thank being you. here today congrats on the book this has been guys we fuck the anti-slut shaming podcast we'll talk to you next friday Thank you. Thanks for having me.